Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What up, everybody? We got to start by apologizing. Yeah. Primarily, I I guess I have yeah. to apologize. It's all your fault. I got so sick. I got the RSV. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh, respiratory, <sighs> some sort of a virus. A cold. I don't know what happened. I went to the dermatologist. Uh-huh. I never leave my house. No. Because I doesn't. don't want to. Yeah. I don't like people necessarily. <laughs> the only people I like are raccoons. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. But I had to go to the doctor and within 24 hours, I was sick as a dog. Yep. And then I got my husband sick as a dog. We were just lying up in our sick bed in our filth, rolling around in our stinky sheets for an entire week. And I couldn't <laughs> come here to report on the no nope. reality trash. She was struggling yeah every day text me i can't do the bond today <laughs> well, I, I, so I, could hardly talk. I know i was like don't worry about it <laughs> jesus it's I gonna know. be okay like it's all right it's just a podcast but i yeah. mean i i look forward to it me too sitting here with you talking about all these things it's the highlight of my I life know. beatrice what would i have <laughs> if i didn't have this nothing nothing <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So I, we do apologize because yeah, we didn't have a podcast last week. We didn't have any YouTube videos. I was just sick. So yeah. I still sound sick, but I'm feeling so much better. Yeah. And so we are back with the jump off. And we are here today to talk Sister Wives, honey. And then mm-hmm. after Sister Wives, we're going to jump into 90 Day Fiance. <sighs> so I hope you're ready. Yeah, you better be I ready. I hope you're ready. Get ready. Before we get into it, though, we do have to issue you a disclaimer. Is my wig falling off? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> a little disclaimer <laughs> for you, which is to hide your wife and hide your kids. Yes. This is a dumpster for a reason. We have ridiculous and absurd opinions. We are not going to apologize for it. And so no. if you're so funny, old, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, honey. But if you're down... And if you're cool, welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down and cool, go follow us on Instagram mm. at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. If you were missing us last week because we were sick or she was sick and we were gone, we have a bunch of bonus stuff mm-hmm. up on Patreon so to keep you stuff. all entertained. So go on there. Okay. Yes. Go on there and go off queens. <laughs> and kings pop off um also if you're watching on youtube please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and share every single thing you do helps us to grow and we really truly from the bottom of our cold black and dead hearts we appreciate you thank you thank you thank you all right we are starting with sister wives honey yes we are on season four we are into episode five entitled infertility and nesting what's the nesting about it's the houses oh so christine yeah. and janelle well everybody they're they're trying to manifest the gated community <laughs> and the cul-de-sac with the four houses and so that's what this episode it's about it's about the houses mm-hmm. it's about fundamental fitness honey because yeah. as you may recall this is janelle's passion it's her dream she's been exercising for a few months and she's got her life back now and she can go on hikes again and now she wants to spend twenty three thousand dollars a month for a ten thousand square foot gym and she's gonna need one thousand members in order at least to pay that rent (laughs) she's excited about it though yeah so we're gonna talk about that and then of course we have to go on on the ivf journey Oh, this is sad. For marrying Cody. Yeah. The depressing journey of her infertility struggles, yeah. which is really sad. There was actually a lot of information was, in though. this very brief half an hour episode mm-hmm. that we're going to get into, starting with the cul-de-sac. Yeah. We meet the adults out at the cul-de-sac. And so two of the homes are almost done. Yep. And let me ask you, because I don't know. I wasn't there at the beginning. But is this the cul-de-sac we're ultimately going to end up in? Yeah, bitch. Okay, so these are the houses. They're these big the as houses. fuck. I know. They're huge. Wow. I don't know how much money the, they are. Didn't you look up 
something? Yeah, well, I mean, I looked up a blog from back in the day and they were saying that each of those houses were approximately 450,000 doll hairs, which means four of the houses would be about 1.8 million doll hairs. Damn! Which is a lot of money for these people. I mean, these people can't keep anything, <laughs> like any money at all. Robin's in fucking debt. Cody's not working. Well, he's working in marketing. Not really. Which is MLM. Well, I think he is working in marketing. I just don't know how many coins he's bringing in. I do know he's bringing in that rose gold Nissan. That's it. <laughs> which did make an appearance in this episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is a lot of money for this family yeah and they have to apply for some weird fucking financing right because it's technically just mary and cody as like the joint people and then three single moms right (laughs) yikes and so for a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar home your mortgage payment is going to be about forty five hundred dollars a month that doesn't include your utilities and all of the other things that you're going to need That's a lot. in addition to all of your cars and your insurance. Like it's a lot of money each month for each of these. Is my wig falling off? <laughs> it's sliding. <laughs> each of these. Sing- I can't feel my head. Each of these single moms. It's going to be a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And so when I was reading this blog, again, this is a blog on Sister Wives from back in 2012. Wow. So I was just doing my raccoon monocle investigative um, services for you people. Of course. So they were saying that this lady who's doing the mortgages and running the numbers currently in this episode, she's going to come back to the Browns and say, unfortunately, <gasps> we cannot give you conventional mortgages because you broke ass, ho ass, bitch ass, <laughs> don't got no money. However, if you all can put down 40% cash money dollars... Damn. on the total amount then we can finance the rest and it's speculated that the the rest that is financed would be an interest only loan oh that's now the an worst. interest only loan is the kind of loan that got us into trouble in 2008 honey when we had the whole mortgage crisis yeah it's basically where all you pay each month is the interest on your loan for a period of time, typically like five to 10 years. But after that five to 10 years, the entire thing is owed. (laughs) So then when you do the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. If the Browns are getting into this cul-de-sac in like 2013, 2012, and they had an interest only loan with a 10 year term, allegedly, I don't know. Wouldn't that kind of be an incentive for them to sell at the end of that 10 years and maybe move to Flagstaff and pay off these loans? That would make a lot of sense. But it was all under the guise of like, you know, Dayton's going to college and all that kind of stuff. Well, yikes. I mean, that's actually one of the reasons Robin wanted to do it, which I don't think she actually shared. But yeah, it was under the guise of we just want to live in Vegas anymore. This isn't the place we want to be. But I think it could have something to do with those loans coming due. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You guys out there, you tell us. Yeah, let us know in the comments. But as we are watching them walk around the cul-de-sac, we can hear... Both, I think Janelle and Mary say, there's just no way we're going to get this money. <laughs> there's yeah. no way we can afford it because Janelle does the money. She's like, yeah, how am I going to come up with even a conventional down payment of 20% for four homes? Right. There's no fucking way. And I think Mary even says, like when they initially brought all of these plans to them, Mary threw her plans in the garbage because she's mm-hmm. like, there's no way. Why like, would I get why? attached to something if we're not going to ever get into it and then later in the i think it's in this season or next season is like when she starts talking about her wet bar and start talking about all the upgrades to the house all of a sudden she's learned to manifest and to dream (laughs) speaking of manifesting we have like cody on the couch inviting janelle to believe in the dream of the cul-de-sac and he brings up the lehigh home yeah as one of the reasons that she should because he didn't believe at the time when they were looking at the Lehigh house, that it was even possible for them to purchase. But he got on the phone with Janelle, and Janelle's like, you better go and you better get that house. King. And I'm thinking that's not how that happened, though, Mm -hmm. because I do believe it was Janelle 
who purchased that house. Oh, really? Now, at the time, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know y'all will in the comments, <laughs> on YouTube at least. Um, at the time, she was separated from Cody. This is right. after she left one of those times. Went to Wyoming. And he's trying to get her back. And I think she had come into money like it was some sort of an inheritance oh. that she used either for the down payment or a goodly portion of the Lehigh home. Wow. And I think it was Janelle who financed that Lehigh home. Even though Cody's saying in this episode yes. he was the one that purchased yes, it. Yes, he was the one who made that step in, step in faith. I don't know if he said he purchased it, but he stepped out in faith and believed in it. And it was Janelle who encouraged him. Well, it was Janelle who bought that house. Ooh. Two years after Janelle buys the house, I think she adds Cody to the deed. And I think Mary as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's always been Janelle fucking financing yes, this whole family. Trying to figure out the money in the coins. Jesus crackers. Yes. And so they all go to that lady's mortgage mm -hmm. office. And I'm just embarrassed. I'm just like, I'm looking at Robin. I think she's embarrassed. I mean, she, she has to be, she's right? She's like, I, can't, I got no money. <laughs> I mean, I got nothing, y'all. I nothing just got this all. baby and I got this vagina. That's all I got to offer. <laughs> And there's nothing. And I'm just like, how are they going to make this work? Well, maybe she's believing Cody. Like maybe Cody's like, don't worry. I'll sweet talk Janelle. I'll give her that renaissance in Vegas like she talks <laughs> about. And it'll be fine. And we'll be able to afford everything. It'll be totally great, babe. Don't worry. Maybe she's believing him because Robin's kind of dumb. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely dumb. But um, I just don't know how they're going to end up doing it. Like they, I know they end up doing it. They I'm like, do. where do they get 40% of 1.8 is 700 and some odd thousand dollars cash how are they going to do that and then how are they going to finance the rest i just don't even understand and i don't even think they get into it too much in the season because if i remember correctly it's been a while but like they have that talk like all of the wives go to the loan officers and stuff and they're all worried whether or not they're going to qualify and robin thinks she's not going to qualify christine thinks she's not going to qualify how do they qualify and they all end up qualifying how robin isn't employed when was the last time she was and employed? she's in a bunch of debt apparently christine's never been employed I know. I don't know how it's got to be the in. TLC, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think in 2012, which is the year that they're trying to do this, yeah. I don't think that these people are making a ton of money from TLC. I don't know. Maybe they are. They I wish somebody be. could figure out figure out how much they were making. If John and Eight plus Kate were making millions of dollars with their fucking kids shitting in toilets on TV. I don't know that they were making turbo millions of dollars. They were in, making millions. In the, in, the, in the Vice documentary, yeah. he said that TLC was making millions upon millions of dollars on their family. I don't know how much they were actually taking from that. I know that mm. they made a lot of money. Yeah. They probably did make millions, but I'm just like, when though? Yeah. After how many years? I just don't think at this point TLC is throwing millions of dollars at the Browns in 2012 after two years of filming. I don't know, man. I don't know either, but I want to know. I want to know. And that's why we're talking about it. Yeah. Okay, next we move on to fundamental fitness. Girl. Now, as you recall, last season, yeah. we had all of the wives, including Robin, who was very pregnant, go to the gym and get yelled at by that guy. And get for weighed. Being fat asses. Yeah. Lazy Robin. pieces of shits, except for Robin. Yeah. And Janelle was mortified. Of course. I think she weighed 250 pounds. I think Christine weighed 222. Mm -hmm. I think Mary weighed 210. Yeah. And I think Robin weighed 150 pounds. <laughs> As she's pregnant. <laughs> she's fully pregnant. Yeah. And so this was a changing moment. Of course. In Janelle's life. And she realized, holy fuck, I've got to do something. Yeah. And so we had the whole fitness journey of season three, where I think she lost 10 pounds. <laughs> but... She she is consistent. She's yeah. working out. She's getting stronger. And I think she lost like 18 inches or something off right. her waist. So like she did end up losing, which is good. Right. And I am proud of her for her fitness journey. I mean, that's a good thing to be <laughs> proud of your fucking wig. I can't. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it is a good thing to be proud of. And in season three, they were talking about opening up a gym. And the whole family was on board of, with it. Cody included. Cody was like, yeah, we'll name it Fundamental Fitness. It'll be right. great. Because we're fundamentalists. Because we're fundamentalists. <laughs> and I thought it was like not that bad of an idea. Like compared to all of the other ideas that the Browns have had, mm -hmm. this is probably not like terrible. Right. And it was <laughs> Cody's idea. Yeah. 
it wasn't really even Janelle's idea, no. but because Janelle has been consistent, I think she's the only wife yep. who's been consistent with the fitness. Like she's really gung ho. She's really into it. And apparently they had an early investor, somebody who's like, yep, I'll put up the money. Remember mm-hmm. they met somebody in somebody's dining room. Yeah. And it was um, a personal trainer, I think it was and some and a friend or something friend, like yeah. that. Yeah. So they were going to invest, but they ended up not investing. Yeah. And now Janelle is creating a business plan and she's doing the research necessary, which mm-hmm. you got to do if you're going to open a business. Of course. To try and find out how much it's going to cost to lease a place. How many memberships are they going to need? She's preparing this report and then she goes over to Mary's house mm-hmm. to meet with the other adults. What did you think of that scene? Well, I mean, I felt bad for Janelle because she's like excited about it and she's the one crunching the numbers and I feel like she's the only one that, with a fucking brain in this whole family. Does she have a brain though? I mean, she's got something there. Okay, really, but two dollars and fifty cents per square foot for a ten thousand square yeah. foot gym is twenty two thousand yeah. five hundred dollars right. a month to have a gym that doesn't even include the equipment. <sighs> You, she's going to need 1,000 <laughs> memberships in order to pay the fucking rent. Yeah. And I mean, you go to whatever place you go to yeah. on your fitness journey, it, uh, whenever. <laughs> You've lost seven pounds and I'm resentful. <laughs> so skinny over there. My strong, God. strong and skinny. Yeah. But do you think your gym has sold 1,000 memberships? Oh, easily. Really? Oh my God, they've sold way more than that. And I in go to- this town, in this town, that franchise? Totally, dude. Oh, okay, really? Oh, 100%. I and don't think so. I think it's like 100. So many, no, there are so many people because I was one of these people that would sign up for a membership and then not go and then just keep paying because at Planet Fitness, where I go, they have like a contract. So like if you are stuck in that membership, you have to wait until like the year rolls over to actually cancel it. So they're also getting all of these people that have signed up for memberships who are too lazy to cancel. Right. And that's how gyms do it. I don't know. I would be shocked personally if you had a thousand memberships at that dinky fucking gym that you go to. Oh, I'm sure they but do. But maybe they do. I'm just saying, dinky. I can't imagine that these people are going to get a thousand people to join Fundamental Fitness. Oh, yeah, no way. No. In Nevada. It's like in a, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> it's like a good idea. Like, it's sweet. Like, is to it? Ha- well, yeah, to have like a gym that's for people who are like, insecure out of shape or whatever kind of like planet fitness that that already exists so like the whole idea that she's coming up with i'm like planet fitness already did that yeah but i mean it just seems like huge overhead it's a lot yeah Yeah, it's a lot of money and so i get where cody's coming from he's like i don't know if we can even do this like i i don't think i'm really into it anymore but underneath all of that underneath the disapproval is but we're going to waste all this money on my sister wife's closet, though. Right. And that is what I'm wondering, because yeah. Robin is sitting there with the baby saying basically nothing. Mm-hmm. But we already know because at Christmas, she brought out her my sister wife's designs and gave them to the other wives. Yep. So we already know she's designing and she's planning. And so she has it in her mind that she wants to start this business. And while this business, the fitness studio or the gym was Cody's original idea now all of a sudden he's cold on it yeah and he's he's rethinking it and he's like well but I mean that would take all of the money that we make from marketing which is MLM bullshit like can we really afford to put all of our profits into a gym what if it's not successful Mm -hmm. what if we get another bankruptcy after y'all already had three bankruptcies in 20 years (sighs) Which is one of the reasons you can't get a conventional mortgage. Well, yeah. And they only get bankruptcies because they kind of have to. Because they have to right. take the financial burden in polygamy, Cody. Right. And move shit around. Yeah. So Cody is souring on this idea. And on the couch, Christine says something like, yeah, I'm, I'm really frustrated in this conversation. Because as soon as Cody starts to become disinclined about an idea, all of a sudden, we're not able to do it anymore. Yeah, convenient. Yeah, and Janelle gets pissed on the couch too. She does, because it's like the only idea that she's actually been passionate about. She like literally, none of the wives give a shit about my sister wife's closet. Like it's only Robin. For a good reason. Yeah, it sucks. They end up going to the conventions and stuff with Robin and they hate it because it's not profitable because it's really shitty jewelry that's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And it ends up being a massive failure. So it's like, okay, Cody, you're willing to take a chance on this jewelry business, which is fucking stupid as hell, but you can't even like entertain this gym idea, which was your idea in the fucking first place. Right. Yeah, I'd be mad too. 
Yeah. And Janelle's like, well, how come I have to convince you? Exactly. How come I'm like supposed to be trying to persuade you? Weren't you the one who came up with this idea? And I'm the one who drew up all of these plans. I'm the one doing all of the legwork. And now all of a sudden you don't give a shit anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, Janelle, you're never going to open that gym. And I feel bad because I think even to this day, Year of Our Lord 2024, that is still one of Janelle's primary interests and passions I is know. is fi fitness and nutrition yeah and now she can't even do it because her finances are all entangled with everybody else's she ain't got nothing henny she ain't got nothing to her name yeah it sucks it, it is kind of sad i feel bad for her so she's gonna have to go back to the drawing board and try to find a way to make it happen that makes sense for the family but we all know that is never going to Nope. happen okay after this we get to the cody and mary ivf journey will they or won't they it feels to me like cody wants to maybe take a chance on ivf because at the end of this episode he says something like well you really regret the things you don't do yeah and i don't want to be 90 years old and wish that we had another child mm, i don't know how much i by that like I wonder if this is all just like a ploy to like keep Mary happy or something or like maybe Robin's whispering in Cody's ear like maybe you should try for IVF maybe that would mean a lot to her maybe she'll be happy it's like I don't know because Mary's not really into it and rightfully so I don't know I'm thinking in the back of my mind Cody just melted down her ring mm -hmm. and told her it's because I don't want you to have any claim over me mm -hmm. so maybe Mary is actually reticent or hesitant because she knows that Cody's changing and their mm. marriage is changing. Like by the time they get to the fertility specialist who asks them, how often do you guys actually bang though? Mary's like, um, uh, we're fine. Timing's not an issue. Yeah, we're, we're okay in that department. And then Cody on the couch says, well, it's basic logic that you have to at least bang once a month. I don't think they're banging at this time. I don't know if they in are. In 2012. Because when we listen to Mary from 2023, uh -huh. she's like, we haven't had, we haven't been intimate. We haven't had a full marriage for a decade. Yeah. Years before the catfish. I think it's. I think it's slowly petering off for them. Like, I feel like he gives it to her once every few months. And then it's just going to go to birthdays. And maybe a Christmas or something. And yeah, then it's going go to go to special occasions when I get yeah. to see Cody's dick. Exactly. Oh, yay. Oh, goody. <laughs> this sounds fantastic. Ooh. I was really interested, though, to hear Mary's perspective on her like conception journey at the beginning of their relationship. Yeah. Like she got married and she didn't want to have a honeymoon pregnancy. She wanted to wait until like Father's Day. So June, because they got married, I think in April, right? Something like that. Yeah. April. And so she was hoping by June Father's Day, she'd be able to announce that she was pregnant, but that didn't happen. And then a whole year passed and nothing. Mm -hmm. And they're starting to think to themselves, this may be an issue. This isn't normal, right? And then they onboard Janelle and Janelle gets pregnant right away with Logan. Yeah. And then the month before Logan is born, we bring on Christine. Christine ends up getting pregnant in one month. Mm. And Mary's just sitting back going like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? And this is when Mary says, I think this is where my anger problems stem from. Yeah, you think? When she was talking about all this, I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Why she has been, you know, acknowledged as like a mean p person, an abusive person, like very hard to get along with and everything from the kids. So I'm like, yeah, because she's taking it out on everybody else. Like she doesn't know how to deal with the immense pain and sadness that it would be to be somebody who comes from a big ass mormon family she wanted to have eight fucking children she could only have one and then the next time she gets fucking pregnant she miscarries like that's horrific it is horrific but here's the thing if you're watching this as somebody who's new to the browns which we all were it's you know season four like we're just really learning about this family yeah and you mention your anger problems to me i'm gonna be like that's a non sequitur i didn't know you were angry what are you talking about oh, what good point. anger problems are you referencing so are you saying that at the beginning of your relationships like you had a problem with janelle who were you pissed at cody christine i really wish we would have gotten some more information there because that doesn't really make sense sense in terms of having watched the show for three mm. now four seasons do you know what i mean that's a good point yeah in the context of when this was released i mean i don't know if they'd really talked about 
any of her anger problems in these earlier seasons. I think maybe they alluded to the fact that it was difficult when like Janelle and Christine came onto it, but they just, you know, they're the Browns, so they skated over it. Right. So that makes a lot of sense because we know the context now. Right. Season 18, season 19. Like right. we know all of this stuff now, but back then, good point. So it sounds like Janelle comes into the family. She's a fertile myrtle, immediately yeah. gets pregnant. And then Christine, same thing. And Mary is just a hellion to live Jealous. with. Jealous jealous and the way mary talks about it is she's noticing like how much effort it takes for janelle to like take care of a baby to handle logan and so she finally just says you know maybe i don't need a baby maybe that's just all too much for me maybe i can just learn to be happy being the legal wife and that's fine and so once she takes the pressure off of herself then they conceive leon yes and I think 12 more years, they continue to try to conceive because she just assumed, well, since I conceived and had Leon, then it's probably going to be easy. Yeah. But it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And then we have that pregnancy, which they ultimately lose. And Yeah. After 10 weeks. That's very sad. It's really sad. And both her and Cody break down about it on the couch, which it's like nice to see some vulnerability from Cody because we don't see that Is it anymore. real though? I think it's probably real. Like as somebody know. who's like watching your wife like i think he did love mary at one point like watching your partner go through something like that is really shitty and sad so i mean i think part of that is true but i just don't think he really cares to like want to have another kid with her like they tried for all of these years right okay we had one that's great but i'm banging all these other bitches and they're popping out babies left and right and so, so i'm good I'm we fine. have a huge family i'm gucci and in 2023 we have mary asking herself like what would that kid's life be like? Mm -hmm. Had I had a child when Leon was 12, like if that child is now 10 years old or 15 years old or how, however old that child would be, like what kind of life would they have? Would they ever even see Cody? Because he's spending right. all of his time over at Robin's and, you know, Christine's kid or Janelle's kids, they don't even see him for like nine months. So like yeah. what would life have actually been like if I had brought a child into the equation? A single mom who works yes. two jobs. Yeah. Yeah. That. And it's actually sad because she's like, yeah, I, I want a child, but I just don't know if I want to deal with all of the heartbreak and the jealousy and the politics in the family and the problems. She's probably been through so much mm -hmm. in her life. She handled a lot of things badly, it sounds like, but yep. she's just like, I don't want to go down that road again. I don't blame her. Nope. Honestly. And it's really sad to watch her just be vulnerable on this episode and talk about it because it's just something that's really hard. And then it's something that gets brought up like all the fucking time by Robin in all of these seasons. Just like, oh, I know Mary can't have a baby, but I offered to be her surrogate because right. I'm such a good person. It's like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Can we talk that through though? Yes. So when, when Robin is offering to be the surrogate, is she saying, Mary, let's take one of your eggs. Mm -hmm. Let's have it inseminated by Cody's uh, jizz. Yeah. Let's put that, that fertilized egg embryo into my womb to carry it. Yeah. Or is she saying, I'm just going to let him um, shoot up the club in my womb and I'll have a baby and you can just take it home with you. Because I don't see them going through the expense and through the trouble of doing it like insemination in a petri dish and then putting it into robin but maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong i mean i feel like that would be the only option but if that was what robin uh -huh. was thinking like let cody come in me and then we'll mm -hmm. have a baby and you can have it that would be wild <laughs> and then what if she then gives that baby to mary and then we go through the inevitable dissolution of the entire family and then what happens with that kid oh robin's like God. give me back my fucking baby oh my God. <laughs> or what if it is a traditional ivf and Insemination, it's implanted into Robin and then she gives birth to the baby and she's like, you can't have my baby. I'm going to keep it. It's my <gasps> baby. <laughs> oh just, my God, that'd be wild. It would have been wild to actually see that. I don't know. Do you think Robin was genuine in her offer? Uh, I don't or is know. she just doing it for the camera? Because it's right after she pushes King it's Solomon right out. <laughs> she's like literal minutes after King Solomon yeah. comes into the stage and she's like, I really want to be your circuit and have your baby for you, Mary. I want to believe that 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 some part of that is genuine, but I mean, it was also on camera. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, she was right after giving birth. So I'm like, you have all those hormones in your body and that's the first thing that you want to say to Mary is, hey, I'll be a surrogate for right. you. I mean, that's like kind of a big deal, but I just feel like she's got other intentions with that. Like it's just to gain Mary's approval and to like be her best friend and be like, look, mm -hmm. I'm a good person because I offered this. 
Right. But Mary's not going to fucking take that. Obviously, we know that now, but right. she never would. And as we've discussed in our previous rewinds, it's like every time Robin says something like that, like points out the fact that I want to tell Mary first that I'm pregnant yeah. because, you know, she struggles so much to have a baby and I don't want her to feel bad. Like every time she does something like that, I just feel like Mary inwardly cringes because yeah. she's under the spotlight again for something that she cannot do that she really, really wants to do. And you're just pointing it out again. And yeah. so even after you give birth, you're calling me into this room and you're pointing this shit out again. On TV. Mm -hmm. And Mary's such a private fucking person. Mm -hmm. Like she does not reveal anything. Walls are up. Right. All the time. It's unsafe. It's I unsafe. Feel unsafe. And so to have Robin constantly point that out, it's like, fuck you, bitch. And so no wonder like Mary in season 18 gets mad at Christine for talking about the ring and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because those were stories she wanted to tell in her tell all book, probably. Right. <laughs> God, poor well, Mary. I mean, I thought for again, a 22 minute episode, yeah. we actually got a really interesting glimpse into how they handle business, mm -hmm. how they're handling these homes, what's going to be happening with these homes. Yeah. And then, of course, Mary and early relationships and kids. Yeah. Very interesting. I love it. I love all the layers in this show. I love it too, babe. Mm. 